you're watching Sciences Job. My name is Pranav and for those of you that are new to the channel, I released a video last month called Sadhguru Exposed which got a lot of hate. Lots of hate comments, lots of comments telling me how much of a fool I am. And while all comments including hate comments are welcome, I may not respond to the haters. Because once you've been on the internet for long enough, you know that responding to trolls is a slippery slope to the realm of bad mental health. I will, however, respond to people that disagree with me in a respectful manner. I think we need to encourage that sort of discourse. We should all be open to the fact that we might be wrong. I know I am. You just have to convince me of how I'm wrong. And discussions with people that disagree with you uh, kind of help you do that. They help us find points that we missed out in our arguments or maybe even show you why you're wrong. So everyone, please, whether you agree with me or not, please have a very respectful discussion down below in the comments. Now, while I can make a video talking about responding to all the comments, I think there are some comments that give you more value than the others. I found a lot of people giving me arguments, citing sources, uh, and when I went through all of them, I felt that people didn't know how to use evidence or maybe even sources correctly. And I felt that it'll be useful if I make a video on just this. How do you use evidence and sources correctly? There are two things you need to make sure. What kind of evidence you should use and where you should get your sources from. What is evidence? Evidence is basically just observation. Let's start at the bottom and slowly climb to the top. Before I go on, I know there are many parts of this video that are just basic and boring for many of you, uh, but I need those parts to make my point. So please bear with me. I have a pen with me, which I can observe is blue. I have first-hand evidence that this pen is blue. I can go tell this to someone and he hasn't seen the pen himself. He hasn't seen the evidence himself, but he knows that this pen is blue because I told him so. He can go and tell this to someone else and that can go on in a chain. Now, evidence works exactly like this. There's usually some observation that can be a single piece of evidence or many points of observation, that's data. And usually uh, an experiment is conducted and uh, or a study is done and this is reported by the paper, uh, by the primary source which made that observation. From there, it can go on to articles and magazines and it goes on in a chain just like what I showed you earlier. So how do people usually go wrong? Simple. If one of these things is wrong and you get your information from there, you now have the wrong information. So why did I not mark the evidence itself as wrong? Because the evidence is never wrong, right? It's the interpretation of evidence that's sometimes wrong. For example, if you see the uh, sun going across the sky and you interpret from that that uh, the sun is going around the earth, congratulations because you've just set your species back by 500 years. But if you take that piece of evidence and make many more observations and collect all that evidence and draw a picture from that, draw a conclusion from that, you are much closer to the truth. We know today that the earth goes around the sun and we see the sun going across the sky because the earth itself rotates. Either way, the evidence that the sun goes across the sky was not wrong. So the evidence does not give you the whole picture of the truth, but only part of it. So you have to collect as much evidence as possible before you draw your conclusions. People, however, cannot make, cannot sit around and make observations all day. We unfortunately have our lives to get to. That's why we have researchers and studies that, that do just this. They collect a lot of evidence. They collect evidence this way and draw conclusions in a way that minimizes error. And articles and magazines and newspapers just take these conclusions and run with it. And that is where the error creeps in. Just like in a game of Chinese whispers, when there are a lot of people, the last person always tends to get the wrong message. 
The same way, when you get your information from a source that's much later down the chain, the chances of you getting the wrong information are much higher because error has somehow crept in along that chain. So every time an article or a magazine interprets the conclusions of a study, they unwittingly add their own error and this keeps compounding with every source. You don't want to get the wrong information. So as much as possible, try to get information from a source that's as early as possible in that chain preferably the primary source itself because if you don't your information is now unreliable take a look at this comment it asks me why they should believe me i'm not asking you to believe me i provide all of my sources for every claim that i make i provide all the sources in the description you can take a look at my source and decide what your opinion should be Remember, someone saying something is usually so many sources down the line that the information they give you is unreliable. I'm not saying they're wrong, but they could be. Or worse, they could be lying to you. Always see if they cite sources. Go to these sources, see if you can get to a primary source yourself and look at the evidence yourself and make your own conclusions. Now I've dealt with the error that creeps in here, but what if the primary source itself gets the interpretation wrong because they also gather evidence and their conclusions are also an interpretation of that evidence. So it can happen that a study gets that conclusion wrong. So what do you do in that case? One, use a paper that is published in a reputed peer reviewed journal or publication. Peer review usually takes care of uh, the study being done properly and the conclusions being drawn well while minimizing error. Two, see if that evidence is repeatable because repeatable evidence is usually reliable. Three, this kind of ties in with the first point but basically see if the way the study was conducted was in a manner that minimized error see if a large sample of data was collected and if it was an experiment see if it had well maintained controls etc before a medicine gets approved and it's available in the market it usually has to go through multiple stages of double blind placebo control trials uh, before it gets a pass a lot of alternative medicines when subjected to this kind of testing usually just fail to provide any evidence that they're any better than a placebo. That should give you a decent idea of how to use evidence correctly and what kind of sources you should be using. Um, now let's look at some comments and see what they say. First this comment. So Sadhguru has made a claim that uh, mothers of twins, one boy and one girl, can produce two different kinds of milk and he has quoted this article for it. And while Scientific American is a very well reputed journal, uh, it cites sources and all properly, uh, the article itself, if you go and read it, it does not support this point. It says that mothers of a single male or a single female child have different compositions in the milk they produce. Sadhguru's claim was that mothers of twins, one boy and one girl, produce two different kinds of milk at the same time, which this article does not support at all. I know where I got this from. So when you cite your source, Please first go through it, see if it actually supports what you are trying to claim. And uh, if it doesn't, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. But uh, if it doesn't, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. Let's look at more comments. I've got so many comments on water memory. So let's look at what the claims are. There are two significant researches on uh, water memory. One by uh, Masaru Emoto and one by Dr. Luc Montagnier. <laughs> I think I butchered that French name. Anyway, let's, let's uh, take a look at what they did. First, Masaru Emoto. He has published a book called Hidden Messages in Water in 2004 in which he describes an experiment uh, where water is subjected to positive words, sounds, pictures, music, uh, and when frozen, it forms these beautiful ice crystals 
and it forms not so beautifulized crystals when it's subjected to negative uh, messages and words. His experiment, however, has been widely criticized for being designed very poorly in a way that uh, uh, that makes it prone to uh, error or manipulation. Uh, his experiment never passed peer review and has never been published in any reputed journals. This is why peer review is important. Luc Montagnier, however, is a very well reputed scientist. He has won the Nobel Prize for his discovery of the HIV. However, his experiment on water memory too has received a lot of criticism on not being peer reviewed. No third party has been able to replicate his findings and the only publication he managed to get was in a journal where he himself was chairman of the editorial board. <laughs> this is worse than Bollywood nepotism. All of these claims are so groundbreaking that if they were true, they would completely revolutionize science. And science would welcome them with open arms if they are honest about their findings. But as Carl Sagan once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Next comment. So I can see this next comment has given multiple sources. The first one is one that I've already talked about. So what's the second one? That's uh, Masaru Emoto's uh, water experiment. And the third one, I have an entire video about eating during a solar eclipse. Please watch that. And um, when you go to the source, it clearly supports what I said, not what Sadhguru said. It says that uh, models evolve when there's new evidence. The reason I wanted to show this comment was because what this person has done is taken the claims that they have or the claims that they believe in, just type it into Google and find the first link that comes up and just paste it in the comments. That is confirmation bias. I talk about it a lot in many of my videos. I should probably do a video about confirmation bias. Don't fall prey to confirmation bias. If, if you find evidence that says the opposite of what you believe, examine it carefully. Maybe you're wrong. Be open to the fact that you're wrong. And yeah, don't fall prey to confirmation bias. Now I can just make this video about uh, all of the comments I've gotten. Uh, and I tried doing that. I've tried doing that actually. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to make every video on this channel useful somehow and this is one use that i could find uh, out of out of the kind of comments i was getting uh, but i have made the kind of video that uh, <laughs> that i'm sure y'all wanted me to make and sadly it just ended up being too long i wanted to upload it last week but again it ended up being too long and and too i i didn't like it i just didn't want to upload it but I want to inform you, I want to say that to all of you, but unfortunately I couldn't because I haven't hit a thousand subs yet. And YouTube doesn't let you do community posts or text posts until you hit a thousand subscribers. So help me get there as soon as possible by hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already. Everyone else, I really appreciate the support that you're giving me. I see all the positive comments. Those are really, really supportive. I'm, I'm so glad to see that so many people are really scientific in their thinking. And yeah, stay that way, stay scientific. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, remember, science is dope.